In this episode, you're going to learn the five best kept admin secrets in Microsoft 365. And you'll be amazed how many people don't know this. Check it out. Greetings my fellow YouTubers, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP. Welcome back to the channel, especially if this is your first visit. Now today I thought I would take a stab at what I think are my five best kept hidden secrets from within Microsoft 365. These are hidden gems that I guarantee will make a huge difference to both you as well as your users. So make sure that you stick right to the end, okay? Because there is some good stuff here. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then click on that subscribe button, ring that bell up there, and come and join my great learning community that I'm trying to build out. If you have any questions or comments, as always, just get those down below. Now, um, if you'd like to take your skills a little bit further, then why not consider joining my Patreon site here? We have full courses here, as well as an ever-increasing library of interesting and deep dive sessions. So definitely uh, take a look at that because there's some really cool uh, exclusives. Details just here. So without any further ado, let's take a look at my five best kept secrets for admins in Microsoft 365. Check it out. One of the most popular applications in Microsoft 365, of course, remains Microsoft OneDrive for Business. OneDrive is currently available in two flavors, one for personal use, of course, and also one for business use. So with its business use comes a whole host of really nice features, of course, with the ability to uh, have uh, online versions of your documents, which are always available. You can dictate messages now. You can even apply sensitivity labels. But what if the worst thing happens and you lose that document or something goes horribly wrong? Well, in this case, one of the first places you would typically go as a user, you would go to your recycle bin. Now, something that amazes me, how many people don't know this, is that you can select a document and you can simply restore that document from here. After 30 days, however, this document goes in to the second stage recycle bin. Um, again, how many people might not know that? So here in the second stage recycle bin, it stays in here for a further 63 days for a total of 93 days. So again, that's the first place that you can restore files from. Now within that time, again, if I have, let's say, a document that I'm uh, currently working on, Another thing feature here is I can select the document and you can go in to the document's version history and you can pull back a previous version of that document. And this is particularly useful if you create a presentation or create a spreadsheet and you make a mistake and you save it and you think, oh no, uh, I, it was the other version that I needed. This is super, super useful. Um, something that, again, amazes me how many people don't know this is um, if I just deselect that. The ultimate restore tool, however, is you can find here where it says you go into the little gear icon and tucked away in here is the restore your OneDrive feature here. This is so cool. I can click into here and I can simply select a date. So you, three weeks ago or a custom time zone and check it out. I can, you can see here's the documents that I've been working on. And as I come back from that time period, you can see that these documents are available. So again, I can simply select this and again, I can restore these back. How cool is that? And you will save the day again. Now, one other just little feature that I just like to mention is here in Microsoft 365. Um, if you're, for example, in the admin center here, and what I'm going to do into the admin center is I'm going to click on show all, 
and I'm going to go into Microsoft Teams. Now, the one thing that you should realize is Teams is essentially a wrapper service for SharePoint document libraries. Do remember that a SharePoint document library, you know, when you create a team or a Microsoft 365 group, um, again, contains the storage, which is stored essentially in SharePoint. So just as a quick tip, I've got a, a team here called the Manchester HQ. One thing that you can do is if you're not sure about deleting it, you can archive this, okay? And you can even make it read only. So after a moment or two, this document is, or this team is now archived. Now, uh, again here, you can see that it will just render itself and you can see that it's now been archived. Of course, to unarchive it, it's super simple. You just simply select it. So just click on here and you unarchive it and you're back to save the day. Now, of course, what happens if you delete it? Well, pretty much guess what's going to happen. So oh, just let it render for a second. Click on here and delete it. And of course, it's gone completely. So when it's now that it's gone, there is no restore bin, of course, in Microsoft 365. So to fix this problem, simply scroll up, go into Teams and Groups, and if you go into Deleted Groups, sure enough, the Manchester HQ is here. And all you do is simply restore the group, which in turn, of course, resumes and returns the team. All right, so there you go. Now, the clever thing is, again, amazing how many people might not know this, uh, and is if you go into, let's say, uh, a user account uh, in Microsoft 365, and you're having an issue with a particular user who's saying, I've lost my files, I can't find my files, you can simply click on the OneDrive option in their account, and in here, um, you can create a link in order to access the user's files. Once you have that link, simply click the link. And as before, you've, you've now got full access to that user's OneDrive. Click on the gear icon and click on the restore options. And again, you get the same OneDrive restore option here. So there's just one final piece of the puzzle, and this can be found here in SharePoint. Now, do remember that a OneDrive for Business typically can be up to five terabytes of personal storage. But for, for corporate business, when you create a team or a Microsoft 365 group, um, again, uh, in here, I can open up the SharePoint site or the team, here you can see that you get a shared uh, environment. Now, really important here, of course, is that you also get a shared document library. So any super important content will go in here. Now, from a corporate perspective, if you need to restore something back, check it out. I can go up to the gear icon here, and sure enough, you've got the restore this library option and you've got the same features. There you go. So once again, you're a miracle worker and you save the day. So setting up Microsoft 365 groups can be a cumbersome task for administrators. So it's fantastic that regular users can create groups. But one of the most common mistakes that users make is that they don't assign an owner to a group. So what happens with an ownerless group? It can be very, very frustrating. So what happens for these ownerless groups? Well, a great solution can be found here in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So we can find this really cool feature here in Organizational Settings. And if I come into Microsoft 365 Groups, uh, we have this checkbox here that says Ownerless Groups. And if I simply click into here, I can now configure my policy. So you can specify who can receive the ownership of the group, um, the number of days in which they have to apply, 
and also notify most active members after a certain period. So I can simply go into next. I can specify a user. So this is just a little demo account. And this is very cool. So you can see here, I'm sending an admin base message. So I'm saying basically, I need your help with the dollar group dash name group here. And you can see how that's rendering this here. So dear user or dollar user display name. So this is an admin feature. And you can create this little email here. And you can see, hey, would you like to take ownership of this group? Um, you can also put a policy guidelines URL there if you want to. Now you can specify the policy to certain groups or all active groups, if you will. So in this demo, I'll click on all active groups. So now, um, now that this policy goes live, so once again, we've saved more of your valuable admin time. Now, a super common question that I often get asked is, hey, Andy, here in Microsoft Teams, if I scroll down and uh, have a look at the last column, there is an option that says an expiration date. How on earth do I put an expiration date on a Microsoft team just like this? Well, actually, you can't do this in Microsoft Teams. You have to actually do this in the Groups node in Azure Active Directory, or as we now know it, Enter ID. And essentially, we have this little option here that says Expiration. And this doesn't just work for Microsoft 365 Groups, of course. It also works for other things as well. So in here, I can simply add a group or a, a Microsoft team, of course, which is what I'm looking for, simply scroll down and you can see that we have the Oslo office uh, group and team here. I simply add that in and now you can see because I've got this selected group for Oslo, it's going to notify the administrator every 180 days. And what actually happens here, it uses AI and machine learning, and it detects, is there any traffic in these groups? So if there's no traffic in the group within 30 days, it will then place this group into the recycle bin system. However, if there is traffic in the group, it resets the date counter for another six months. So thus, saving the day once again. So I'm simply going to save this and takes a few moments and let's have a look and see what happens in Microsoft Teams. So once again, back in Microsoft Teams, I simply select the Oslo office, scroll over to the right and look at that. We now have a temporary date on here. So at the end of this time period, if there is no activity within a month of this date, it will then go ahead and delete it. If there is activity, don't worry. It just resets that counter for another six months. So up next, I just want to mention a small feature called security defaults, um, which sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to find. So if you come in here into the overview page in Microsoft Entra, I can click into properties and if you scroll right down to the bottom, we have this little tiny feature called security defaults. And this can be a super user feature, um, especially for, for anybody who's really concerned with security. So we can simply come in here and you can enable the security default on for this tenant. A word of warning here, by the way, is that you have to be careful that you haven't got any, for example, conditional access policies on. So this is a great baseline security feature, but potentially it would wipe out any conditional access policies. But if you have a brand new tenant and you want to ensure that that tenant is secure, then check out the security defaults feature. Absolutely awesome. And there's a very good white paper here telling you exactly how it works. Here's another little feature I often get asked about, and it can cause a heck of a lot of frustration for administrators. So I'm simply going to come in here, and if I go into, let's say, a usage report here, I can click onto the various reports here, and you can see 
uh, the usage and so on. Um, one of the things you might want to do is you might want to view, um, you know, the files that were stored. You might want to view things like activity logs and things like that. Um, we also have an active users report here, and this will provide us with details on a particular user. Hmm. Okay, well, that's not particularly useful because the username is anonymous, and it's so frustrating. So how on earth do I change this? So the answer is simple. So simply come back into your Microsoft 365 portal and then pop into the settings page here. Uh, in settings, go into organizational settings, scroll right down to you come into reports and look, check it out. Here we have display concealed user group and site names in all reports. Simply take that checkbox out, save the changes, and now what we'll do is simply pop back into reports, go back into that usage report again, and again we've got that same report, but this time, look at this, you've saved the day once again. So there you have it, my five best kept hidden secrets in Microsoft 365 for admins. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you feel that, hey, there was something missing there or you knew of one that I should have included, then let me know, get it down below and I'll do my best to add it to the next video. All right, um, comments, questions about this or any of my other sessions, as always, get them down below. And if you've not subscribed, then bump the subscribe button, come and join my great learning community. That's it for this time. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.